Previously in Earth Science, we discussed that water can come in one of three states. It can come as ice, which is solid, the water we drink, which is liquid, and water vapor in the air, which is invisible, which is gas. We said that when water gets hot, it's called evaporation, and it turns from ice to liquid to water vapor, and it, the coldness that it was holding onto, it lets go into the air around it. The opposite of that, when water gets cold, is called condensation. It's when it goes from water vapor in the air to liquid to ice. And the heat that the water was holding onto, it lets go and lets in the air around it. The water vapor that's in the air is called relative humidity. And the temperature that's needed for that water to cool down and condense from water vapor into the liquid is called a dew point. Another thing that's needed for condensation is called condensation nuclei, which are tiny particles in the air for the water to condense onto. So let's talk about condensation that happens in our atmosphere in terms of clouds. I'm Mr. Ackerman, and this is Earth Science. This year, we talked a lot about water. Water in streams and rivers, groundwater, and now water in the air. Most of Earth's liquid water is in the ocean. The sun heats up the water and causes it to evaporate into water vapor, aka gas state of water. As water vapor rises in the atmosphere, it cools and condenses to form clouds. As water droplets grow, this is when we have rain or snowfall. Rain that flows on the ground is called runoff, which forms streams and rivers and will eventually feed back into the ocean. Another way that water will enter the atmosphere is through transpiration. Its some water is breathed out by leaves of plants. So water will enter the air through transpiration or evaporation. This cycle of water going from the ocean into the sky, coming down as rain, and then eventually back into the ocean is called the water cycle. Now, let's actually talk about these clouds. Clouds can form anywhere in the troposphere, which is the bottom layer of our atmosphere, closest to Earth. The air that is now warmed up and filled with water will begin to rise and expand, and as it gets higher, it begins to cool. The imaginary line in the sky that tells us where condensation is going to take place is called the condensation level. This is where the temperature is the dew point, which means this is where water vapor is going to condense into liquid. A shape of a cloud is going to tell us how the air moves around it. For example, a cumulus cloud, which are those big fluffy ones that are flat on the bottom, and they grow upwards. Because of the moisture in the air, the condensation lets go of the heat, and now the cloud is going to be warmer than the air around it, which is going to cause it to rise. Another type of a similar cloud that grows upwards is a cumulonimbus, which is a rain cloud, also whose base is flat and starts at the condensation level. Another type of cloud is called a stratus. Sometimes the air doesn't allow for the clouds to rise upwards because of air pressure, so it's spread sideways. We're going to talk about air pressure in a later lesson. Scientists can predict the condensation level because as air rises, it's going to cool about 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So, based on the temperature and dew point at the ground level and how high the cloud is, scientists can figure out at which point is the condensation level, at which point in the atmosphere is this water going to turn from vapor back into water? When water droplets or ice crystals and clouds grow heavy enough to fall, precipitation occurs. Precipitation is any form of water that falls from a cloud to Earth's surface, like rain, snow, sleet, and hail. So how do raindrops form? Well, droplets will bump into each other and combine. Some droplets will be bigger than others. A way that droplets become bigger is if they were there earlier, they'll have more time to form, or if they have bigger condensation nuclei. But bigger drops will fall faster than slower drops and will capture or combine them. Drizzling is fine water drops that fall slowly and close together. Raindrops are going to be larger, fall faster, and be farther apart because they combine. Temperature in the clouds is usually freezing forming ice crystals. Snow is when ice crystals in a cloud collide and clump together. Sometimes rain falls through a layer of cold air and freezes, creating sleet. 
If there is not enough cold air to freeze while falling, they'll freeze when they hit a surface called freezing rain. This can cause things like sheets of ice and if they're heavy enough, can break trees and power lines that they fall onto. In the summer, precipitation usually melts before it hits the ground and comes down as rain. The exception is hail. It begins as these big clumps of ice crystals that collect smaller particles and cloud droplets as they fall to the ground. When they do hit, they sometimes can be as big as baseballs. The way the rainfall is measured is by an instrument called a rain gauge. It measures what the depth of the water would be if the water did not soak into the ground, float away, or evaporate. Scientists have also learned to do weather modification, which is changing the weather. For example, fog needs to be removed from airports or certain areas need rain. A way they do that is through what they call seeding, which means that they add nuclei and ice crystals, creating more chance of rain assuming that the cloud is already there. Where in the world does rainfall occur? Well, the simple answer is anywhere where there is warm and moist air that's rising in large amounts. Let's take a look at a mountain range, which will show this very clearly. As the air rises on the left side of the screen by the Pacific Ocean and condenses into clouds, the wind will carry it towards the right side of the screen, towards the east. This is called the windward side, the side where the wind hits first. And it's, since it's full of moist air, eventually it's going to rain. By the time the wind gets to the other side, to the leeward side of the mountain, the air is already going to be dry and is starting to sink, compress, and warm. So on the right side, you might have less rain than on the left. Areas near the equator will also have a lot of rainfall because they are next to water and they get a lot of insulation, a lot of sunlight. Because of this, they might have daily rains in some places, which create tropical forests. A place that's not going to get rain is deserts. Deserts have high air pressure, which doesn't allow air to rise. And again, we'll talk about air pressure in the next lesson. Another area that's not going to get a lot of precipitation, a lot of rain, is the North and South Poles. It is too cold over here for water vapor to rise in the air. Today's lesson was brought to you by the sun. The entire water cycle is powered by the sun since day four of creation. That's it for today's lesson. Make sure to answer the questions in the form below and hit the submit button. Next, we'll talk about air pressure and wind. Have a great day.